got your Bibles, let's go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14, again at verse 15. And when one of them that sat meet with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is the man that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are ready. I don't feel impressed to go any further with that. I feel the Lord's telling me to stop right there. I am not even going to preach what I plan to preach. I'm going to preach, come. All things are ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this time I could preach your word. Ask you, Father, to anoint my lips of clay, anoint those who hear this message as ears and heart to hear. And if there's anybody that needs to be saved, ask you to save them especially in Jesus' name. Amen. I was starting to read about this parable of a man inviting these different people to the feast. <clears throat> I believe there's a feast around the corner. It's called the Wedding Supper of the Lamb. I believe that Jesus is getting ready to come. Now let's face reality. We are in the last of the last days. I'm just going to turn to a few verses. Just don't worry about that. You know, I'm not even doing what I was originally planning on doing. I mean, put my notes aside. Forget them. <laughs> but we're in the last of the last days. Matthew chapter 24. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read part of it. Again at verse 4. Well, I'll start verse 3. As he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us what these things shall be, and when shall... Be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. He's asking now about the end of the world. Now understand there's dual passages in this. Some point to the destruction of the temple of Israel. I think it was 73 A.D. If you got the wrong date, uh, please pardon me. I know it was either 70 A.D. or 73 A.D. I forget now just right off the bat. But the other part. The sign of thy coming and the end of the world. Let's go back to verse 2. And Jesus said unto him, them, say, See ye all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Then, you know, he said, When shall these things be? First off, that's dealing with the destruction of the temple. When, and what shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the world? That's what's upon us now. See the dual fulfillment? Jesus answered and said, Take heed that no man deceive you. That's either one. Believe me. For many shall come in my name, saying that I am Christ, and shall deceive many. I believe there's probably people back in those days but it's even more now than ever. Look at Sung Young Moon, Jim Jones. Uh, how many other people said that their Christ returned? You know what? Don't believe them. Don't believe them. For me, verse 23, Then if any say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, and lo, there, believe it not. For there shall be many, arise many false Christs and false prophets, and show, show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they should delete, deceive the elect. Behold, I have told you before, there's going to be false prophets and 
false Christ, people saying that their Jesus returned. I got news for you. I don't believe Jesus is just going to return in some chamber somewhere. He's going to be returning in the clouds. Amen. I believe in what's called the twofold second coming. First, he comes, takes the church out. Amen. And then he t later on comes and at the second advent and overthrows the work of Antichrist. But anyway, come, all things are ready. For there shall be false Christ, many come say that I am Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of war. Boy, that is being fulfilled right before our eyes, has been for years. I remember people back around the early 1980s thinking we were already in World War III because of all the wars going around at that very time. And look how many wars have happened since Desert Storm. Then we had Iraqi freedom. Then we've had some other isolated things, like example, 1983, when the terrorists attacked that, 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 our base in Lebanon and killed all those men. I personally knew one man that died in there, Dave Cosner. I went to high school with, I think he was a class behind me, but he died in that place. Fiery tragedy in 1983 in Lebanon. Last year when I was ringing the bell, I, I just feel I need to actually say this. In case one of his family gets to hear this. As much as I, I, I honor him. Last year on Veterans Day when I was ringing the bell, I rang with several people of mine. My uncles who fought in World War II, Arthur and Stover, both gone now. I forget if I did. I think Dorman Phillips, a friend of mine that fought in uh, the Korean War, he's gone now. And then Dave Cosner, who died that tragic death. The other guy's still living, thank God. Brother Mike Maxson who fought in Vietnam. Hallelujah. I believe he's a worthy man, Brother Mike Maxson is. I love the man dearly. Great man, good preacher. I love the man dearly. Thank God he's still alive. But anyway, wars and rumors of war. Come on. <clears throat> See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. We're living there, aren't we? We're living there, aren't we? I'm going to say it. I expect any day now, if the Lord, unless something changes, I won't be shocked when we're... In war with China, I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen technically. I believe that what they've done recently concerning this COVID-19 was an act of war against every nation. That's, so I believe technically we're already there. Just they're not, We're just not nuking them or dropping bombs on them yet. I don't know how much longer it'll be before we do. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines. I think we're on the verge of a phantom now. And I'm not talking the famine of the word, though that's it there too. And not a famine over in Ethiopia or in uh, Indonesia or in India. I believe we're going to see a phantom right here in this country. Yeah, just mark down what I'm saying. I believe we're going to start seeing the phantom in this country. <laughs> we're going to start seeing bread lines in this country if we do not have revival. And by the way, if you're going to vote for a Democrat hoping things are going to change, you are pushing the button to have that phantom automatically. 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 So you vote for some Democrat. You're voting for terrorism, dictatorship, and phantom. 
don't even pray, don't even consider it. I've already made my mind who I'm voting for in November. It's it's a sealed fate. But anyway, I'll get off politics now. There should be phantoms and pestilences. Pestilence. Look in Second Samuel chapter twenty-four. You'll find out what a pestilence is. It's a disease. <laughs> Fulfillment, isn't it? I'm going to say something. I've been studying things out, and I'm beginning to have my eyes opened. Let's pray for people who get coronavirus. Don't get me wrong. There's a lady right now that needs our prayer. I know of, seriously. Yes, people have died of coronavirus. I'm not going to get and tell you none have. But I believe this has been the most exaggerated thing that's come around. I'm going to say something. I believe the majority of the people they said died of coronavirus died of anything and everything but that. But I do believe there's some. But I believe they're in the minority. And I'll leave it there. Because I can tell you several people. I know three people. I know of three, yeah, who've had coronavirus, have who have lived. And all of them are in the camps that are not supposed to live. What do you mean past 70? Past 70. 70 or above, I should say. I will say something. Pestilence, that's a sign. Earthquakes in diverse places. Don't be shocked when an earthquake hits your area. You say, oh, we never have there. Don't be shocked. Because I believe they're going to happen. It's not just going to be California. It's not just going to be the usual places. I believe we're going to start seeing more earthquakes. In fact, when we see these tsunamis, that was an earthquake in the sea. Mm. Add that to that list. Uh, earthquake in diverse places. And these and all these are the beginning of sorrows. No, I don't believe we're going through the tribulation yet, but we're heading for that. That's what the warning is. We're heading towards there now. I believe we're heading at breakneck speed. Come, all things are ready. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated all nations for my name's sake. I believe that's a twofold fulfillment myself. <laughs> Number one, of course, it's the Christians. They're already turning against us. <clears throat> they call us hate mongers because we preach against homosexuality. Mark it down. The real hate mongers are not the Christians who, who condemn homosexuality. It's really the homosexuals and their followers. They're the real hate mongers. I'll tell you what. I desire every homosexual to be delivered and set free from it. But thanks to them, thanks to what's going on now, they're destroying the homosexuals. They're going to send the majority of them to hell. I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. <clears throat> they shall deliver you up to be afflicted. It's going to happen. I believe both before and after the rapture of the church during the tribulation. And shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Oh, the other group, the Jews. Mark it down. There's going to be a rise of anti-Semitism. Amen. I'll just mark it down. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. There will be a rise of anti-Semitism in this world and in this country. Mark that down. And then shall many be offended. Oh, we are already in that hour. What do you mean? You deal with the homosexuals. They're offended. You deal with a... With a Muslims say something against them. They're offended. Oh, yeah, they're liberal followers. Ah, that's horrible. Got news for you. God is against them. You shouldn't be offended over people denouncing their sins. You should be offended over what they're doing to you. They're the ones who, who are involved in crime. 
there you take the Muslims they're ready they, they would gladly blow us up any time now if they could <laughs> many shall be offended you deal with somebody about a sin they've committed I've seen some you're judging me <laughs> I actually had a guy do that to me one time. Yeah, he could tell me a thing or two about me, but when I start dealing with him, he suddenly got, went off. I've seen stories like that. Come on. They shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Hatred is on the rise. Betrayal is on the rise. Don't betray your brother. For as much as you've done it unto the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. I feel this snitching spirit can be applied to betrayal one to another. Mark it down what I'm saying. These people that have snitches in their states now, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. They're betraying people. They're causing hatred and anger and animosity. Because, see, I don't believe you can love a brother and betray him. If your conscience doesn't go in the overdrive, you repent and go back to that brother and tell him I'm sorry. And then I'll tell you something else you need to do if you wrongfully accuse somebody. After you apologize, there's a thing called restitution. You pay for their lawyers. You pay for their fines. But I just, you pay it. You get that reward money. Take the tithe. Give it to your pa to a pa God-fearing pastor. Your pastor, I hope. Take the rest and use it to pay that other person's bills. Scripture verse! Luke chapter 19. When Jesus, when Zacchaeus got saved, he said, Lord, half my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. But it wasn't false. He really was taking a walk down the street when we were told not to. I think you're just as guilty as Zacchaeus. That law should not have been passed. That governor, I'm just going to say that these governors are starting to act like tyrants and dictators. I think there's a word, they need to be put in a certain plant in a peach mint. <laughs> Impeachment. And I think they should be arrested and tried for that because this is an overreach. And they have no business. Constitution's there to protect your rights from those governors. Did you know that? I like getting political here. I'll say this. Vengeance is the Lord's. The Lord knows how to bring. If you have done a God-fearing person down, you and God's eye have done it to Christ. You've reported somebody walking down the street without a mask. In God's eyes, you've done it to Jesus. You report a church for being open. In the God's eyes, you've definitely done it as you would have done it to Christ. And so hasn't that governor, that mayor, that city councilman. I'm going to say something. God will take note. And vengeance is his, saith the Lord. And I'm going to add something. If they don't suffer now, they will suffer. I'm going to say something. I believe as long as these criminals, yeah, criminals, that's what they, a lot of them are. These governors who, who are oppressing the churches, tell them they have to be closed. These people who are turning 
people in for just taking a walk down the street. Amen. I believe in God's eye. You're a criminal. I won't name some names. Gretchen Whitmer is a criminal in God's eyes. And if she gets by in this life, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen to her. Ecclesiastes 8.11, because sentence against an evil work is not ex executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. She, at Governor of Kentucky, Hillary Clinton, Nancy Pelosi, Adam Skiff, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Hunter Biden. Some of those people, if they're not brought to justice, this life, they will. Their hearts will get hardened. They think they'll get by with more. You don't sin against God and get by. I don't know why I'm preaching this, but I believe they ought to hear this! Because you know what? You will stand before God. Revelation chapter 20. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. I, I, I feel like I need to say this, and then I'm going to try closing. I believe the Lord has given a message to come. This may be your last hour. We don't know when the rapture is going to happen. Amen. Revelations chapter 20, verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are it, written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up their dead which were in them. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And this is the second death. And who served was not found written in the book of life. Was cast in the lake of fire. You get by constantly of crime. You will stand before God. You will die first off. When you die, you'll split hell wide open. And then there comes the day when death and hell is called out. <laughs> and you, they'll be standing there with all the unsaved dead. They won't be oppressing anybody anymore because they'll be cast into the lake of fire forever. All hope gone. And sinner, if you're not saved today, all hope will be gone for you when you die. Backslider, listen to me. You are in worse shape than the sinner, according to Second Peter chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty-two. What is the message? Come, for all things are ready. Jesus is getting ready to come any day now. I could get more. I don't feel I need to. I just want to challenge those who hear me today. Today, if you hear the voice of the Lord speak to you, don't harden your heart as it was in the days of provocation. You say, oh, I got plenty of time. You're not guaranteed another five minutes or five seconds. Now's the day. Quit delaying and get on your knees and say, Chip, not say it, Chip, but say it. Lord Jesus, I've sinned. I'm sorry. Please come into my heart and life and forgive me this day of my sins. He searched through the highways the hedges and byways 
and ask them to come to a feast. He invited them all, both the great and the small, the strong as well as the weak. And yes, there is room to sit with the groom and share in his great wedding day. For the Father desires that his house may be filled. You better hurry, for it's getting late. For yes, there is room to sit with the groom and share his great wedding day. For the Father desires that his house may be filled. You better hurry, for it's getting late.